Nearly a month ago, I began this series of sermons by focusing on the thought of the Lord calling out to mankind. God, I said, was calling out to mankind with a call of repentance. He desires for mankind to turn away from wickedness and to turn to him. I then focused on the Lord's love. And I focused on how the Lord is willing to forgive us of our wickedness, our sins, mm -hmm. so that we can be with him, not temporarily, but eternally, yeah. everlasting life. Yeah. Yeah. Last week, we saw the work of reconciliation through Christ and how we can now live in harmony how we can now live in peace with him. Should we have faith and should we be redeemed because of our genuine faith in the only begotten son of God? So here we are today. We rejoice today, don't we? We rejoice today in the giving of the only begotten son of God who became our propitiation mm -hmm. to make these things possible for us mm -hmm. through the shed blood of the lamb of God, a new covenant, a new promise. It has been made with us by the Lord. Mm -hmm. That promise again is whosoever believes in his only begotten son will not perish, but will have what? Everlasting life. All of us know that promise very well. Unfortunately, Christ, his birth, death, and resurrection, it is a major stumbling block for many. What this means is that the everlasting promise from the Lord is one that some struggle to accept. Some not only struggle to accept it, but they don't take it seriously. Not only do some not take it seriously, they simply cannot fathom or believe in what God has promised. So I tell you today, we still have a choice to make. Do you believe in the Lord? Do you believe in what he has promised? Yeah. Do you believe that God has promised forgiveness? Do you believe that God has promised mercy? Do you believe that God has promised redemption? Do you believe that the Lord has promised to you salvation yeah. through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? Oh. Do you believe today? The choice is yours. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. let us focus here today on that choice. Mm -hmm. Let us focus here today on understanding that we have a choice to make and that we will be held accountable for the choice that we choose to make in answering those questions. Yeah, yeah. Now, when it comes to answering those questions, when it comes to having faith in God and believing in his only begotten son, I find that many are hesitant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that many hesitate to believe in the Lord and his only begotten son. Right. I believe this hesitation, I believe that it happens for a couple of reasons with one being that some don't think that they have to believe in Jesus Christ. All right. All right. You see, some believe that they are special. Mm -hmm. They believe that they are so special that faith in the Lord, it is unnecessary. Do you hear me here today? Yeah, yeah. You see, this was a major problem for Israel. Mm -hmm. It was a major problem for them in Old Testament days, and it was a major problem for them in New Testament times as well. Yeah. You see, Jesus, he taught to the Jews that should anyone abide in his word, mm -hmm. that they would be set free, Jesus said, from the bondage of sin. However, the Jews, after hearing Jesus make that statement, they argued with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The Jews, they argued that they did not need to abide in his word. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they said that they did not need to abide in his word was because they descended from Abraham, 
who was their father. They then lied and said to Jesus that they had never been in bondage to anyone. And again, we know that that was a lie. Even at that time that Jesus was living, they were up under the rule and the authority of the Romans. So their thought, Mm -hmm. the thought that they had there was that they were special and that they were covered Mm -hmm. because they descended from Abraham. Because they descended from Abraham, they did not need to believe in him, Jesus Christ. I reference this to you today because there are many who believe a great deal that they personally Mm -hmm. do not have to believe in Christ nor be in fellowship with him in order to be saved. They believe this because of mom. They believe this because of dad. They believe this because of grandma. Mm -hmm. They believe this because of granddad. They believe this because of someone else who they may be close to. What I'm trying to say here today is they believe this because someone who they may be close to, they go to church. Mm -hmm. Someone who they are close to, they believe. And because they believe, they believe that they themselves are covered because of the faith of someone else. They believe that they are saved because of the faith of someone else. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying there today. See, that kind of reminds me of the way that I thought when I was a child. See, when I was a child, I didn't feel that I need to pray for anything. Because I had my dad, who was a pastor. I had my granddad, who was a deacon. My grandmama was a mother, or, you know, she was my grandma, if you will. And my mom was the wife of a pastor. I had uncle, who was a pastor as well. I didn't feel that I needed to do anything. (laughs) You see, I thought I had it good. I thought I was covered. I don't know if any of y'all have ever felt that way because of somebody else's faith. But little did I know, little did I realize that I needed to pray for myself. Little did I realize that I needed to believe for myself. You see, all of us, we have to have our own personal walk with Jesus. All of us have to have our own personal relationship. All of us have to have our own personal fellowship Mm -hmm. with the Lord in order to be saved from the guilt of our sins. That's what I want you to know and understand today. Mm -hmm. To truly be in fellowship with the Lord, one must enjoy their own personal walk in the light of God. You see, those that are not personally walking in the light are actually walking in darkness, Mm -hmm. whether they realize it or not. As John said, should one remain walking in darkness, they can be overtaken by that darkness. Mm -hmm. They can be overtaken by that darkness and they can end up finding that they have no way out of that darkness Mm -hmm. because they become fully convicted of that darkness. So again, the choice is yours today. Will you believe? Will you choose to walk in the light or will you choose to walk out of the light and walk in darkness? Will you choose to remain in darkness? Again, will you believe is what I ask you today. Again, some remain hesitant to walk in the light of Christ. The reason why some are hesitant to walk in the light of Christ, the reason why some are hesitant to believe that they can be saved is because they have it in their heads or in their hearts that they are not worthy to be saved. All right. All right. In other words, they don't believe that they can be saved. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, you have heard me say that before. I have touched on this thought in a previous sermon in this series where some don't believe that they are worthy of saving. So I feel it is again, even though I touched on this recently, 
I feel it is important to touch on this thought again today. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to ever think that way. Come on. The thought that one cannot be saved, I believe, it is a thought that has been perpetuated and put into the hearts of man by Satan, mm-hmm. by the devil. All right. You see, someone who hears that they are not worthy to be saved enough times, it can begin to fester and it can begin to grow in their hearts that they can't be saved. And it can grow into a reality for them to where they begin to truly believe that they are not worthy and that they cannot be saved by the Lord. You see, Satan desires for us to think that way. The devil desires for you to accept that thought as reality because he wants you to remain bound in the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. He has that great desire for you today. I have a different desire for you today. Instead of listening to Satan or what to others have to say about whether or not you can be saved, may I make a suggestion to you today? My suggestion to you today is find God for yourself. Stop listening to Satan. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to what others have to say about your outcome because they don't know your outcome. They don't know who you are. They don't know the road that you have traveled. And because they don't know about who you are, they don't know what is possible. They don't know what it is possible that you can do yourself. I believe that it is possible for you to do anything if you put your mind to it. Do you hear me here today? Jesus said that if you ask, it will be given to you. If you seek, you will find. If you knock it, the Lord will be open to you. I suggest that you ask the Lord. I suggest that you seek for him. I suggest that you go up to his door and that you knock on God's door today. Find God for yourself. Go to God and hear what he has to say about whether or not you can be saved from the guilt of sin. Go to God and hear what he has to say about your worthiness. And while the devil is telling you that you are unworthy, God will tell you that you are worthy. We we know that God has said that about our worthiness because we see this over and over and over again in scripture, don't we? So with that in mind, I want you to show, I want to show you that the Lord has showed us our worthiness. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you today that the Lord has already provided an answer for you so that you can be encouraged to know that you are worthy of being saved. Don't let the guilt of your sins get to you. Mm -hmm. Don't let Satan, don't let the devil or what others have to say. Don't let it get to you Mm -hmm. here in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. We come across a passage of scripture where there had been a false narrative perpetuated by the people, Mm -hmm. by those of Israel about who will live and who will not live. Now the people at that time, they were focused on physical living Mm -hmm. rather than spiritual living. So what we're going to do here with this scripture today is we're going to be focusing on spiritual living. That's what I'm all about. Spiritual living. That is of my utmost concern, importance to me. So as we go through this word today, keep spiritual living in mind and I will keep it in mind for you as well. We'll see there in the second verse, we'll see that false narrative, that false saying. We'll see a false proverb that the Jews had at that time. Mm -hmm. We'll see that it said, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what is being said here is that the parents... They ate sour grapes is what the proverb says. 
And because they ate sour grapes, the children would end up getting the sour taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we would consider this saying to mean a child would suffer the consequences right. of their parents' actions. Mm -hmm. If you're following along with that saying there. Now, let's think about that saying. Let's think about this thought spiritually for a moment here. If we were to apply this saying spiritually, one would be suggesting that the sinful ways of the parents or maybe even others who were close to a child, mm -hmm. it will be passed on to the child. Mm -hmm. Are you following me there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the child there could be nothing but a sinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The child could be nothing but a sinner and would suffer the consequences, the same penalty mm -hmm. of the parents' sins. Mm -hmm. So does this sound fair or unfair to you Come today? On, this was a very unfair way of thinking by the people yeah. as it would give few people a chance. Mm -hmm. It would give few people a chance at being able to make it, being able to live. All right. All right. So we'll see that in the third verse that the Lord had to do something about this. Mm -hmm. We'll see that God, he had to refute this way of thinking We'll see that God had to refute this saying, and we'll see that in the third verse that the Lord commanded Israel to stop using that saying. He had to command them to stop using that false proverb, that false narrative that they had come up with. That didn't come from God. This was something that they, the people, Israel, had come up with themselves. Sound familiar? Yes, sir. <laughs> See, there are many people who have thought this way for a very long time That's right. and still to this day mm -hmm. think this way mm -hmm. and use it to undermine and to condemn others That's right. before ever even giving them a chance. Mm -hmm. They say that they are a sinner and that there is no saving them. Yes, some things are passed down to us like our genetics. Some say I look like my dad, I walk like my dad, I sound like my dad. I can't deny it and he couldn't deny it either. But such way of thinking should never be applied spiritually. All right. All right. Do you hear me here today? Yeah. Such way of thinking should never be applied spiritually. You see, it is certainly possible for a child to pick up on bad habits from those that are around them, like their parents. But at the very same time, as a child grows up, it is possible for that child to learn to not be like their parents. Not to do those bad and terrible, those wicked things. So again, we have to be very careful with tying worldly logic to spiritual wisdom. Yeah, yeah. The worldly sand brought and still brings great harm to many and has prevented or still prevents those from turning to the Lord today that may desire mm -hmm. to turn to God, mm -hmm. that may desire to choose to believe. Mm -hmm. The reason being because some may feel like they are condemned already of their sins. Mm -hmm before they even have a chance of making a choice to believe. I have been talking about the Lord's judgment quite a bit lately, mm -hmm. and I feel that it is very important for us to understand that the Lord does not judge us in the same manner that we judge others. Mm -hmm. God does not judge as man judge. And again, you've heard me say that quite a bit recently. The Lord's judgment, it is righteous. Yeah. Our judgment is with fail. Mm -hmm. It is with fail because we are sinners. 
the Lord's judgment is righteous and without fail because there is no fail or failure in the Lord. As we see the Lord say here in our key verse for today, God said that if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right. God said that he shall surely live. Mm -hmm. He shall not die is what the Lord says there in his righteous yeah. judgment. Yeah. Mm. So if you were a sinner uh -huh. All right. and you genuinely turn to the Lord, mm -hmm. you will be judged as being faithful is what God says there. Mm -hmm. God says not only will you be judged as being faithful, but you will live. Mm -hmm. oh. No matter who you are, where you came from or who you were surrounded by, the Lord says that if you turn to him, you will be faith. You will be considered faithful and you will live yeah. is what the Lord says there. Yeah. The Lord will see said through Ezekiel mm -hmm. in the 14th, the 15th, the 16th and the 17th verse there. If you happen to be looking at it, mm -hmm. the Lord said to Ezekiel that if a man begets a son, who saw all the sins of his father, but chose not to do likewise. He, the son would not die for the iniquity of his father. Mm -hmm. He would live the father. However, because of his iniquity, we are told the father would die. Mm -hmm. So here we see the Lord in his judgment. Mm -hmm. And of his judgment, we see that God is faithful to keep his word. We see that God is just, mm -hmm. that the Lord is fair. As we say, God is faithful. God is just. Mm -hmm. The idea of God judging us can be quite terrifying. All right. All right. Standing and going before the Lord and facing his judgment. Right. However, his refuting of that false narrative that we have seen here in Ezekiel, it shows us that God does not think as we do. Right. We will punish those who hang out with sinners, mm -hmm. those who were born of sinners. We will punish them. We will not give them a chance, but God says you have your chance. Mm -hmm. You have a choice to make is what the Lord says. God does not think as we do. For those that may not believe God is both faithful and just the picture of the Lord, not being biased, mm -hmm. the picture of the Lord, again, being faithful and just and in loving justice and standing against injustice. It is shown again to us throughout scripture especially in the book of Isaiah in the opening chapter of Isaiah in verses 13 through 20. If you want to write this down, you can read it later. We'll see where the Lord spoke of his displeasure with Israel's wickedness, Israel, God's chosen people. And he told them, that should they continue to rebel against him, that they would end up being devoured by the sword. Mm -hmm. God's judgment of their wickedness. Come on, come on. We see there again that the Lord is faithful and just. Mm -hmm. If you do good, you will be rewarded. But if you do wicked, you will be rewarded for your wickedness. Mm -hmm. Not with a good reward. In the 59th chapter of Isaiah, by the time we get to that chapter, mm -hmm. the Lord we see was greatly displeased that nobody stood for justice. Nobody put their, their faith in him. They were putting their trust in empty words. They were believing in those empty words. Mm -hmm. And we know because Israel was doing this, 
We know that the Northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians mm -hmm. and we know that the Southern kingdom was conquered by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. Again, this was God's judgment against his chosen people. Mm -hmm. Those who should have been blessed and highly favored mm -hmm. were being held accountable for the choice that they made. The choice that they made was in choosing not to repent from their wickedness mm -hmm. and turn to the Lord. Oh. Mm -hmm. So on two separate occasions here today, we see where God's chosen people were going to be held accountable by God for the choices that they made. Mm -hmm. As Paul said, there is no partiality with God. To the Romans, Paul said he made it clear that the Lord is again both faithful and just. Mm -hmm. In the second chapter of Romans and the eighth mm -hmm. verse, God, God, Paul said, will render to each one according to their deeds. Mm -hmm. Eternal life to those who in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those that are self-seeking, the Lord said, mm -hmm. and do not obey, God said, they will receive indignation and wrath. Mm -hmm. We see here again the Lord's faithfulness mm -hmm. in that he does not judge us unfairly. He is faithful and again, he is just. Yet at the very same time, we'll see the Lord's faithfulness in that he does not give up on mankind. All right. He does not give up on us. All right. When no one moved, mm -hmm. God put on righteousness as a breastplate, we're told. Mm -hmm. We're told that he put on a helmet of salvation on his head. Mm -hmm. We are told that he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing mm -hmm. and that he was clad with zeal as a cloak. We're told in the 20th verse of the 59th chapter of Isaiah, the Redeemer will come to Zion, said the Lord, and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob. The Lord said to Israel, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You see, again, God gives mankind a choice. Mm -hmm. Will you believe? Through his judgment, I believe that the Lord is faithful and just. Mm -hmm. And this takes away any reason that I personally would have in hesitating mm -hmm. to believe in him. God is the Alpha and the Omega. I believe it. He is the beginning and the end. I believe it. He is the first and the last. I believe it. He is the sovereign ruler over all, and he is able to do all things. I believe it. This even includes passing over my sins because of my faith in him. Do you believe it? If God is able to do this, why would I not believe him? Why would he not be capable of forgiving me if he created all things and he has all power in his hands? Why would he not be capable of forgiving me or you of our sins if we have chosen him? if we have turned to him. So one may be considering, what do I have to do in order to be saved? What do I have to do if I make the choice? If I choose to believe in him, what do I have to do? Through Ezekiel, we'll see the Lord said, when a wicked man turns away from wickedness, which he committed, and does what is lawful and right, the Lord said he preserves himself. Then we'll see God call for repentance. And I'm looking specifically in the 18th chapter of Ezekiel, the 27th verse, and then I'm gonna jump down to the 30th and the 31st verse. 
we will see where the Lord said, repent and turn from all your transgressions mm -hmm. so that iniquity will not be your ruin. God says, cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit is what the Lord said there. So let us note here. Mm -hmm. If you're asking that question, what I have to do in order to be saved, right. let us note that we should turn away from wickedness mm -hmm. and we should never seek to abide in wickedness again. We should then do what is lawful and what is right. In other words, we should be of genuine faith in the Lord, mm -hmm. never wavering back to having no faith. Mm -hmm. Our faith, it should grow into being strong faith. I don't know if you hear me here today. Yeah, yeah. Now, one may ask, how do I know what is lawful and what is right? Mm -hmm. Well, what is lawful and what is right? That's not hidden from us as the Lord has said, what is lawful and right in his eyes to us over and over again throughout scripture. What is lawful according to the Lord is to love him, to love our neighbors and to do good by edifying, that is uplifting each other. You see, the fruit of the spirit, as we know well, is love. It is joy. It is peace. It is long suffering. It is kindness. It is goodness. It is faithfulness, mm -hmm. gentleness, and self-control. Mm -hmm. As Paul said, against such, there is no law. So let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, is what Paul said. Mm -hmm. Those are actions that are, again, not of the Lord. Those are actions that are not lawful and right in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. You and I, we live in a time where we have received the Holy Spirit as the promise. And through the Holy Spirit, we have also received eternal life through Jesus Christ as promised as well. Mm -hmm. The new heart and the new spirit that was spoken of in the day of Ezekiel, we receive through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit. In his letter to Titus, Paul spoke of the work that the Holy Spirit does inside of us as the washing of regeneration and as renewing. Mm -hmm. That is to our spirit. That is to our soul. Our soul, I tell you today, it has been washed. It has been renewed. You see, by the Holy Spirit, the believer is transformed into a new creation. Yeah. A new creation that has been created mm -hmm. in Christ for good works. Mm -hmm. See, this all happens thanks to the work of reconciliation by Christ who died, who was risen and ascended so that we can receive the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and also receive everlasting life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, with God, all things are possible and we should not ever think less. Mm -hmm. This even includes you being transformed from that sinful creature into a righteous creature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, today, the choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Will you believe? Yeah. Do you believe that the Lord has done all of this just for you? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the Lord who sits high and looks low loves you and yeah. desires for you to be with him, regardless of who you are mm -hmm. or who you once was oh, well. or who you may have come from or who you may be surrounded by. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the Lord loves you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this can all be quite a bit to take in for some. The fact that the creator of all things known and all things unknown loves us. I felt it necessary to share this series of sermons for a couple of reasons. First reason being because we all need to know that there is a life of death choice that we all have to make today. Mm -hmm. There is a life or death choice that all of us have to make spiritually today. Mm -hmm. You see, if you were unaware of this choice, 
you now know about this choice Mm -hmm. and there is no excuse any longer. Secondly, I felt that it was important for me to share this series of sermons with you because I feel that it is of the utmost importance that you be made aware that you can be saved from your sins. Mm -hmm. You can be saved from death spiritually, Mm -hmm. regardless of who you are regardless of your sins, regardless of where you came from, regardless of your heritage, you can be saved. You see, I want you to know today that our God is a forgiving God that has had mercy on many who were thought to not be worthy of receiving mercy, of receiving love, of receiving salvation. You see, God thought otherwise. You see, I want you to know that the Lord is a merciful God. And I want to show you that God is a merciful God to anyone who chooses to turn to him. You see, while Jesus hung on the cross and he was there suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, he looked out over the crowd and Jesus prayed. Now, some may say, well, who did Jesus pray for? You see, Jesus, while he was on the cross, he prayed for the forgiveness of those that were there mocking him. Those that were there celebrating his hanging on the cross. Those who were there that were celebrating his suffering as he died on the cross. Jesus, he sat there and he prayed for their forgiveness. We're talking about my God being a merciful God. As he sat there and as he hung between two thieves on that cross, we know the story very well. Jesus, he forgave the one thief that acknowledged his wrongs and that turned and requested to him to be remembered when he entered into his kingdom. Jesus, he forgave him right then and there. We're talking about my God being a merciful God capable and able of forgiving anyone Mm -hmm. overlooking the sins of many so that we could have salvation and reign with him in eternity. Do you believe today? Whether you choose to believe or not, Mm -hmm. I tell you today that there is a choice for you to make and that the Lord is willing to forgive you, Mm -hmm. to have mercy on you and that Mm -hmm. God loves you. Whatever you choose to do with your life spiritually, let us remember that the Lord said that every knee will bow to him and every tongue will confess to him. Whether those in heaven or those on earth, even of those that are under the earth is what is said in scripture. The Lord is going to judge whether or not we turn to walk in the light or whether we chose to remain in darkness. The Lord is going to judge us whether we chose to walk with Christ or whether we chose to walk on our own way, we are going to be judged for the decisions that we made. The Lord, he again made this clear to Ezekiel that every single person will be held responsible for the choices that they make. Mm -hmm. To Ezekiel, the Lord said, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father, as well as the soul of the son, It's mine, the Lord said. Mm -hmm. The soul who sins, the Lord said, it shall die. Mm -hmm. The Lord holds it in his hands. Mm -hmm. What this means for us that we are responsible for our actions and we're going to be held responsible for the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. The premise is that those who choose to believe in the Lord will have everlasting life. Yet we often forget that Jesus also included something else in that premise. In the third chapter of John's gospel and the 18th verse, you will see that Jesus, he stated, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. There is a choice for you to make today. Live or be condemned by the Lord. 
See, while it is possible to die in the bondage of sin, we must remember that Christ gave his life so that we can have that choice of either remaining in bondage or following him to freedom. I choose today to follow Jesus to freedom. I hope that you would choose today not to remain a slave to sin, but will follow Jesus to freedom. You see, the Lord, he desires for nobody to die in the bondage of sin. The Lord said, I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies. Therefore, turn and live, said the Lord. All who choose to deny themselves, pick up their cross and follow him. He will save them and they will be redeemed. My hope today is that you will turn to the one in whom all things are possible, including your salvation, your forgiveness. I, ho I hope today that you will choose to genuinely believe in him. Amen. Amen. Amen.